Hello and welcome to City 7 News. Here are the headlines at this hour. Increase in serious accidents involving beach swimmers. Pakistan cricket team looks beyond recent scandal as later series starts in UAE. And DP World resumes peak 2008 levels due to global trade recovery. Dubai police have reported an increase in serious accidents involving swimmers this year as beachgoers continue to ignore instructions. In the first nine months of this year, 89 serious accidents were reported compared to 81 for the whole of 2009. These included 42 cases of near drowning or drowning that caused eight fatalities. A total of 27 out of 42 of these cases occurred in the months of April and May. According to officials, the main reason is when beachgoers ignore instructions or the warning flags that warn swimmers against swimming and secondly the nature of the tides around the months of April and May since it's the end of winter and beginning of the summer season. Beachgoers were also being warned against swimming in areas populated with hazardous sea creatures such as jellyfish or swimming in areas with strong tides. Dubai Fashion Week has drawn criticism since its beginning for costing participants a great deal of effort and money without generating them much sales revenue. City 7 reporter Carmel Diamici stopped by one of this season's shows to speak firsthand with designers and buyers about their perception of the event. Designers Artivijay Gupta and Aditi Rastogi spent a month putting together their show for Dubai Fashion Week, only to have it shown to a mostly empty audience. However, they maintain that DFW is still a crucial platform for emerging local talent. In terms of buyers, Dubai Fashion Week was uh, not very happening. But otherwise, in terms of uh, branding and media, Dubai Fashion Week rocks. For local buyers, DFW is a crucial time to see what's on the market, and Gupta and Rastogi's line impressed at least one brand manager. The uh, bottoms that I saw in this show could also be matched with Western tunics. So uh, how I viewed that was to pick out parts. Dubai Fashion Week remains a small, modest affair that garners little international recognition. But the founder of DFW says it's not fair to compare it to the Bonanzas in Milan, Paris and New York because it still needs time to grow. Mark Robinson established Dubai Fashion Week in 2007 after seeing a need for a local platform in the fashion-conscious city. Definitely uh, in terms of growth, one would like to see a lot of designers get a lot more work and that should translate into business because that's what the basic intention is. Designers need to grow. Unfortunately, the local buyers that frequent DFW do not offer many prospects for enterprising designers. You, you think of expansion. When you work on a collection, you go for a fashion week, you think of expansion. That's the first thing in your mind. So once you are here, you want to do, obviously you want to capture Dubai, but you want to capture other parts as well if they're coming for the show. Fashion in Dubai is a world unto itself, a blend of Middle East meets West. This season's designers showcased unique abayas infused with punk rock and Rastafarian roots. Bob Marley faces splashed on the front and distressed thread decorating the classic black cloak. Designers of this type of unusual cross-cultural clothing rely on the DFW platform to make a name for themselves, even if the actual sale numbers from the week are low. Carmel Dimici, City 7 News. The much-awaited cricket matches between Pakistan and South Africa began today with a charity match in Abu Dhabi. With the shadow of match-fixing allegations still on Pakistan's team, players are focusing on the series that is crucial in the run-up to the World Cup. Honestly speaking, uh, it's, it's the Pakistan cricket team braved the media at a press conference held after their arrival in Abu Dhabi. Controversy surrounding the team at a critical time leading up to the World Cup made up most of the inquiry from the media. Many were concerned about the aftermath of the spot-fixing scandal in England that cost Pakistan two of its best pace bowlers, Mohammad Amir and Mohammad Asif, and their former captain, Salman Butt. However, former member and current coach of the Pakistan team, Wakar Yunis, assures that all is well. It's going to be a, a great series, hopefully, and uh, you know, I expect a lot of crowd, I expect a lot of uh, uh, support for the Pakistanis because uh, you know, there are a lot of Pakistanis, Indians living here, so, so I hope they will all turn up and uh, watch, a, watch, a, watch some super cricket here. 
After all this controversy, we've still got a very, very fine side. We've got Yunus Khan coming back. We've got uh, the guys in a very, very fine uh, nick at the moment. So, you know, do come and watch them. Enjoy it. South Africa's cricket team also expressed their commitment to give fans an exciting match with only the daunting heat seen as a challenge. We can't predict what the pitch is going to play like. Uh, we, all, we always knew it's going to be hot, it's going to be very humid as well. So it's going to be challenging. Uh, but at the same time, I think that's what life's about. Sometimes going into the unknown and see how you handle pressure. Tonight's charity match will benefit flood victims in Pakistan. The rest of the series will comprise of one 2020, five ODIs and two test matches. Khadija Sali, City 7 News. Coming up later in the show, flights increased for Hajj pilgrims. But first, Laura Buckwell joins me with the day's business news. Laura, DB World making headlines today with its third quarter results. Yes, that's right. And it's the first time that the ports company has actually reported its third, third quarter net profits as opposed to the half yearly. Now, the ports company has actually reported a 14% increase in net profits um, and has resumed 2008 peak levels. For more on that, join us after the break. <laughs> 